Good afternoon, everyone. I hope all is well at your end and you've been able to come back to the normal routine. I'm sure this day is actually reminding of the COVID days. We had even had worse challenges and with God willing, we have always come out stronger and better. So first of all, I'd like to thank our managing committee for spearheading this initiative and our events manage management team. You will not believe last, uh, last night till 2 a.m. we were working on the flyers and uh, able to finalize and send it to, uh, in the morning today. And also I'd like to uh, thank Dubai Insurance and Nexus Insurance brokers who took this request from us very seriously and they said yes without hesitation. So they even have cancelled some of their planned meeting to join us today. So thank you very much for the initiative and the way to give back to society and our chartered accountant uh, the, you know, are very close to our hearts. Thank you for taking time uh, for all of us. Now, I'm sure none of us were expecting rains to pour so heavy and cars getting underwater, homes without electricity, water. But times like this teach us one lesson. Life is unpredictable and which we should always be ready to face it with a smile. One of the things that make us ready to face the future is insurance. So today's session is focused on two primarily areas. One is current issues faced and what kind of documents and procedures are required for insurance claims. And secondly, one how we can cover against any future adversities of a similar nature. So also I'd like to mention that please note today's session is more focused on the Q&A, which will be in the later part of the day. So please type in your questions in the chat window or in the Q&A window so we can raise those questions during the session. And if you like to ask a question, please raise your, raise your hand. And as the time permit, we will allow you to ask that questions from our experts in the session. So let's start the session with our chairman address, address uh, CA Rajesh Somani ji. Somani ji, over to you. Yeah, very good afternoon to everyone. And thank you for joining at very short notice. And dear members, it is always a pleasure to connect with you. And I'm thankful to our XCOM vice chairman, secretary for making this arrangement at very short notice, and but more relevant to the present time. I'm also thankful to our speakers, which accepted our invitation at very short notice and rescheduled their other engagement to connect with us. As you all know, that on last Tuesday, there was a heavy rain in Dubai and this was the highest rain in last 75 years. So nature keep playing its role of unpredictable nature. So it brings new challenges before all the people as well as good learning and opportunity for us. I take it this opportunity not only to educate or not only to provide in health to those who have suffered, who had incurred some losses to their vehicle or assets, but also learn from urgent situation if anything required to improve in the future from the point of insurance coverage. You will appreciate that these type of situations always provide opportunity for making us sharper. Insurance is always taken for abnormal situation, unpredictable events, not for the normal life. And this type of events, once a while, keep in the life, keep come and then provide us opportunity to learn something and move forward. Today's session, we have divided in three parts. First is Speaker Maria. She, will, she is a head of claims in her insurance nexus. She will provide us the procedure and the documents requirement of the claims under insurance policies. And second is Speaker Mr. Sachit. He will provide us about the various insurance coverage available criteria to select the right policy and take appropriate insurance coverage for our desired assets. Third speaker, Ruby Sally. She is in a consulting field of the insurance since more than two decades. She will provide her, she will share rather her practical experience with members so that 
you can get the exact example or exact learning of your practical inning. Thereafter, we will have a question answer session where members are free to raise any question related to insurance, general insurance, so that they can get the desired detail from the expert speakers. In addition to that, I would also like to mention that on 28th April, we are organizing event named Celebration. As you know, our chapter has received the best chapter award in the 11th year in a row, which is a remarkable achievement by any chapter. And the credit goes to the all, all of you, including past chairman and their team, as well as members and our ever supporting sponsors. So we have designed this celebration event to recognize the efforts of the past chairman, past elected uh, body recently, which has re relieved from the position under the leadership of Mr. Harikishan, as well as his team. This will take place on 28th April. My request all of you to please mark your calendar and participate in this event. More detail will be circulated to you very soon by the secretary, Mr. Rishi Chawla. Until that, please take care of your yourself, family. Still, the rough weather is not gone. I understand there is a declaration for the next week for some more rain. So wish you all a safe stay and a very interactive and a learning session today about the insurance. Thanks. Over to Rishi Chawla for taking it further. Thank you, Chairman C. Rajesh Samaniji, for sharing uh, the inspiring note and the calendar ahead of all of us. Now, let's move to our first speaker. Let's start the session with Ms. Madha Asif, who is going to cover the topic procedures and document requirements of vehicle and asset insurance claims. And to formally introduce her, please allow me to welcome our very energetic Vice Chairman C.A. Jay Prakash Agarwalji. Jay Prakash Bhai, over to you. Thank you, Rishabai. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'll keep it short. I wish every member is safe, sound, their families is safe and sound. Uh, the topic is relevant and the management, management committee has uh, put this topic ahead just because of the essence. And that is the reason that, yes, there will be people who are struggling. They maybe have memories. Everything was quiet. Everything was calm. May, maybe. So you might have a memory, but there are people who are struggling. So these are for the people who are struggling. And if you have... if if you have not struggled, but you find someone in stress, please help out and reach out. One is the insurance. Second is also on their personal front. They might be struggling with the food. They might be struggling with the water, electricity, whatever you can do to help. Because there were scenarios, there were stress situations, which I have seen not only our members, others also there. So please do it. And Rajesh has rightly said, there is again a prediction on uh, in the next week on Monday and Tuesday. Again, the rains are there. Uh, we pray that it is not that much bad that what we have seen. And we pray that everyone remains safe and sound. That is the prediction. Let me go ahead and introduce our first speaker, Ms. Madhya Asif. Ms. Madhya Asif is a business analyst and team leader for personal lines and digital solutions in Nexus Insurance Brokers UAE. She is a certified insurance personal with almost 16 plus years of experience in personal insurance solutions, that is motor, home and travel. So she's the right person to guide us what can be done for motor or home damages. She is a graduate of BBA Honors, Bachelor of Business Administration from UAE, and under progress for Doctor of Business Administration from Swiss School of Business and Management, Geneva. So soon we will call her Dr. Madhya Asif, soon. She is a certificate. She has a certification from CII, which is Chartered Insurance Institute UK, which makes her an insurance specialist. With round of applause, uh, virtual round of applause, can we have Madhya on the screen? Rishi, can we have both the uh, laptop as well as uh, her mobile on the spotlight, please? Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you for the introduction. 
So, so Madhya, are you able to use your uh, video? Yes, yes, yeah, please yeah, go yeah. on the screen. My video is on. Yes, yeah, that's me. Thank you. That's me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, lovely introduction. And yes, like how Mr. J. Prakash has said, humanity comes first. We have to help each other. We have to safeguard each other. And um, with this, of course, uh, hopefully with the today's session, uh, we'll be able to provide a depth um, analysis on how things work uh, with regards to insurances for to protect motor, to protect the personal assets. Um, and then, of course, the documents and procedure required uh, for claim registration. So uh, I'll give you a brief introduction of how insurance in UAE works. I'm sure everyone would know um, for a person to drive a car on the road in UAE, um, they have to have insurance. So the, there are two types of insurances. Uh, first is the basic insurance, which is the third party insurance, and then a comprehensive, which is called like full insurance. So um, third party would cover um, the third party damages in case of a claim. So the own uh, vehicle or own um, car will not be covered, but only damages to the third party done by the own vehicle would be covered. Second is fully comprehensive insurance, which I will say is must for a car which is less than 15 year old. So a person can get a full comprehensive insurance with uh, other benefits included under the insurance. Um, in and in in under comprehensive insurance, of course, flooding would be covered. Okay, so comprehensive insurance is like, in case of an accident, your own car is covered for any type of repairs and any other party or any other car or God forbid a person is injured. So that would be covered under uh, by your insurance company as well. So that comes uh, under the type of insurances that a person can get in UAE. So starting off with the um, uh, flooding and the natural disaster, yes, um, insurance companies, they do cover flooding and uh, water damages to the car, but it would be only under comprehensive insurance. So in case um, if a person is deliberately driving in the flood water, the insurance company can say no to um, assess that claim, cannot proceed to repair that particular car. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but there have been videos on social media where a particular person in a, a four wheel uh, truck drove into a flood flooding area, got stuck actually and then there were people who had to break the sunroof and had to pull out the driver and the passenger from the car so a few of the insurance company actually took that video and posted on their social media saying such claims will not be covered because it's a deliberate act by the person um also in the newspaper um the government has declared that it will, they have already alerted that there, there would be thunderstorm and flooding can be expected. It would be heavy rain. So the insurance company can actually base this as well, saying um, the alert was already declared why a person was driving on the road. Yeah, they can consider that as to be a part of declining a claim. But we had a similar case uh, way back in February as well. There have been losses to the cars and most of the insurance companies, like the claims which I have handled personally, they were all paid out. Um, there have been uh, many uh, total losses claim because the repair cost was more than um, the value of the car. I mean, 50% more than the value of the car. So they, that would be considered as total loss. Uh, I've been receiving lots and lots of claims since since 16 itself. So, and we are actually expecting more, unfortunately. But yes, um, if the water goes inside the engine of the car, of course, they'll just consider it to be as a total loss because repairing the car would cost more then, um, then just like they'll just pay out the claim amount. Okay, so um, considering a recent flood, what the insurance company wants a person to do is not to go into a flooding area, 
um, keep, keep the car safe. If in case they are parked in the basement, there have been many instances where the car was parked in the basement, the water went inside the basement, and of course there is flooding in the basement itself. So the insurance company is going to um, entertain such claims. Um, and if in case someone was on the road, was driving back home and got stuck, and at that point of time where the car was stuck and the rainwater came in, flood water came in and damaged the car, then of course the insurance company is also paying claims uh, in such similar scenario. So only a deliberate act which the person did not think about and thought, okay, I might be able to just go ahead in the flooding water, I can just take my car. So that would be considered uh, to be a declining factor for a claim. So that was uh, about the comprehensive insurance and the third party, of course, as I've mentioned initially, um, damages only to the third party is covered. So own fault um, or own um, repair of the car is not covered. So anyone who has a third party insurance um, will not be covered. Um, I'm sorry, just a second, I'm just getting a call. Um, so, um, sorry, I just got off track. Okay, so going you back to comprehensive, yes, oh, yes, yes, um, going back to comprehensive insurance again. Um, so I've said like own damage would be covered and a third party, um, the third party will not be covering any type of uh, flooding and all that on um, damages to the own car. Okay, there's a facility called towing or breakdown recovery service that uh, under that uh, case for both comprehensive and third party, a person can get a towing service. So if, even if a person has a third party insurance, they can call up their uh, breakdown recovery uh, number, which is present on the policy and can get the um, a towing truck and can take the car to the nearest garage or to the location where the client wants a car to be taken to. So these were the main things which a person should be aware of getting a um, comprehensive or a motor policy. So in case of a claim, what all is required? So few of the insurance companies, they have a claim form which a person has to fill in, uh, in which the details of the policy are mentioned along with the details of the incident is mentioned, like where the car was parked, how did it happen? Um, and then uh, second is the police report. Um, we are all aware like uh, the police report for Dubai can be taken from the police um, website, Dubai police website or the police app, Dubai police app. Um, the report is called to whom it may concern. And based on that, um, they can just get previously in February when the rain happened and the client got the um, um, report within 48 hours, but now they are giving it immediately. Maybe in the next uh, five to 10 minutes, they receive the uh, report online uh, on their email. So that report has to be sent across along with the driving license, a registration card and the Emirates ID. Um, unfortunately, the insurance companies are so swamped with all these requests. So they are taking a uh, time, which is like 24, uh, sorry, 48 hours for them to get back to us with the claim intimation slip, uh, which mentions where the garage location is for the car to be towed. And then of course, when once it goes to the garage, they assess the repair cost, which is sent across to the insurance company for the approval. And they will see if it is repairable, then of course the repair approval will be sent across to the insurance company. If not, then they will estimate it as a total loss, which will be sent across to the insurance company again for the approval. So um, that was mainly it. So um, while we give this insurance as a security or safety cushion, but of course it is uh, up to the client or the driver to take precautionary measure as well. Like they should not be, uh, like how I've said previously as well, de deliberately driving through the flooding area to of course um, save your own self, save your own car, to make sure like the car is properly parked if in case they are parked and away from the rain exposure. And of course uh, has to go through like whether they have a comprehensive insurance or a third party. And God forbid, if they are stuck on the road, we would advise the client not to start the car again or 
yeah, not to try to start the car because the damage to the engine can be done worse more. So that was mainly it for the motor insurance perspective. Um, there are additional, if in case we are talking about motor insurance, there are additional benefits which are covered under motor insurance as well, like how um, a personal accident cover can be provided under a motor insurance along with the replacement or alternative car. So um, like personal accident uh, cover is God forbid in case if the driver or the passenger has a injury while in the accident, the insurance uh, company can actually pay for the um, um, dam uh, sorry injury to the person. Um, but that would be a permanent or partial disablement. So loss of limb, loss of sight, stuff like that. And also, God forbid, in case of death, there's a limit of like 200,000, which is the blood money provided by the insurance company to the insured. Um, then comes the replacement car or alternative car benefit, which is uh, provided to the person insured uh, in case of a claim. Um, if the car is given to the garage, and uh, they require an alternative car while the car is at the garage for the repairs. They can get up to seven to 10 days depending on the insurance company. Um, so this benefit can be provided as well. So um, uh, I suppose that was mainly an overview of how motor insurance um, in UA is all about. Um, if you guys have any questions or I'll just proceed with um, home insurance, I suppose there are questions right if i can go through it is that okay yeah, uh, Maria, question question uh, we can take uh, later on okay yeah okay, no problem. Yeah, let's let take it because there is a possibility somebody else will take it you might cover already the question okay, so let's okay. take it towards the end Sure, sure, sure. Um, okay, second um, bit, what I wanted to speak about is the home insurance. Um, very quickly, I'll just explain how I define home insurance is like, um, if in case you have your home, right, if you'll put your home upside down, so whatever falls will be considered as the contents, whatever does not fall is considered to be as the structure of the house. Okay, so there, there can be three type of home insurance that a person can take. So um, I'm as an owner and I'm residing inside my home. So I have to take the structure cover, which will include any type of damages to the structure um, due to water, um, fire, any natural calamities, uh, earthquake, any ex accidental damage that would be covered. Um, contents would be my things, furniture, fixtures inside my home. Um, that can be home appliances, TV, furniture, fridge, and stuff like that. And then comes your personal effects. Personal effects would be things which I can take outside my home. My handbag, my jewelry, my watches, and the cover for personal effects is provided along with the contents. Um, we cannot take standalone personal effects cover and the cover is provided um, on worldwide basis. So if in case I'm traveling with my expensive bag or expensive uh, watch and jewelry, so that would be covered under a home insurance policy or for any type of accidental damage or loss. Okay, so as an owner of the house, I will consider to insure my structure of the house, um, apartment or a villa. Um, my contents inside and my personal effects. As a owner, which I have given my property as um, rent, I have rented it out. So I will just insure the structure because contents and personal effects are not mine. I have no um, use or there's no risk factor for me to cover those items, right? That should be, the, uh, that should be done by tenant. And then third scenario is um, insured by the tenants. Um, the contents and their own personal effects. So if I'm living as a tenant inside the house of my landlord, I will I'll just have to ensure my contents and my personal effects. So talking about the claims bit of it, um, God forbid in case of a theft, of course, police report is required. So a police uh, in the police report, uh, the person or the insured has to list down what all things have been taken there has to be a forcible entry on an exit based on that only the um, police will determine whether it's a theft or a deliberate act you never know um, second thing is accidental damage um, i've been receiving lots and lots of accidental damage claim like for example a tv broke while shifting from one room to another um, it fell accidentally 
insurance company can actually pay. They will charge an excess amount, of course, a deductible for such uh, cases. And even the deductible or excess amount is applicable under motor insurance as well. So it depends on the sum insured or the value of the car for motor insurance. And for home insurance, it depends on the sum insured of the building. Uh, building, when I say is the structure of the property, uh, your contents or your personal effects. Um, personal effects, because the risk is more, the excess amount or ded deductible would be on high side. So contents, yeah, my TV broke. Um, the insurance company will say, okay, if in case it is repairable, we'll do the repair. Um, it would be on reimbursement basis. You do the repair, provide us with the receipt um, and the invoice, we will do the, um, we'll reimburse it to you. If it is not repairable, they'll say, okay, get me um, a replacement cost of this particular TV. If the client says, okay, no, I don't want the same uh, unit. I want an upgraded one. The insurance company get back gets back to the client saying, okay, but we will pay only up to the replacement cost. Whatever the additional amount would be, would be paid by the insured. Excess amount is applicable, like I have said before. Um, and then your personal effects. If in case I have lost my earring um, somewhere in the mall, um, the insurance company will ask for the proof. Of course, I can go to the um, management of the mall, ask for CCTV coverage and all. They can have a look on that. So, uh, Or else, um, if my mobile phone broke in my office, it fell and it broke, um, they can replace it or yeah they can repair it or they can replace it it would be also on reimbursement basis so any type of um, loss theft police report is a must um, and for personal effects yes it can be anywhere in the world so uh, that was mostly yeah briefly about home insurance and then uh, talking about travel insurance that's the third thing um, we have seen, it was actually a very shocking video for me as well. When I saw the Dubai airport, it was full of water. It was like unusual, really, to be honest. So um, they have been flight uh, which got cancelled. And um, even now they have uh, put on the newspaper that uh, in the next 48 hours, maybe they are uh, suspending the flights or they, they're delaying it, some, something like that. So in case someone has already booked a flight, uh, they took a uh, travel insurance what they have to do is like they have to get a, a report from the airline saying which mentions that due to what reason the flight has been cancelled and for for example i'm going on a holiday i've already paid the expenses the hotel stay um the trips and all i've already paid and it's on um, not refundable right so based on that there is a limit of course on this uh, cover trip cancellation so uh, i'll provide the letter from the airline with my booking ticket um with my trip uh, booking and everything hotel stay uh, and also from the hotel or from the um, uh, trip booking i'll get a confirmation that it's not refundable whatever is refundable of course i'll get it back but whatever is non-refundable i need to get a confirmation from the agency or from the um, booking um like website or people wherever I've taken the booking from that is non-refundable based on that of course the insurance company pays up to the limit of the policy so it can be up to five thousand dollars per person um, if I have paid more unfortunately they'll pay maximum of five thousand dollars not more than whatever the policy limit is uh, same goes for um, if in case some someone like if the traveler or the immediate family member of the traveler falls ill and they cannot fly Recently, I had um, two of the cases where they booked for a cruise and it was expensive. So the daughter of the person uh, got ill and she was not advised to fly. Uh, fly. I'm still handling the case. They, it is still under review. Um, hopefully by next week it would be uh, processed. Um, and of course, whatever the client has paid for the booking of the trip and the cruise, it would be reimbursed. It is within the policy limit. Um, there were like four people, so 5,000 per person, um, but it was um, much less than what uh, he paid. So um, yeah, like if in case someone falls ill, 
um, from the traveler, immediate or immediate family member or death of the traveler or immediate family member, and the person has to cut short the trip or can, has to cancel the trip, of course, it would be um, paid by the insurance company. And also under travel insurance, if I have already traveled to a country and I fall ill, and that is like an illness which is not pre-existing. I got a very high fever. I have to go and see a doctor. And that is also um, being paid. That would be paid by the insurance company. And that is also on reimbursement basis. There is an excess amount on that as well. Like how in here for medical insurance, we have deductible or coinsurance. Same goes for travel insurance as well for medical expenses. So any type of emergency medical expenses that would be covered. So under travel insurance as well, you can get a full comprehensive insurance or just a basic insurance for visa purposes. So most of the Schengen countries, they require an amount to be covered in case, uh, God forbid, if there is emergency medical or death for repatriation costs and all that. So yeah, that would be just the basic insurance. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it with regards to uh, motorhome and travel insurances. So um, next would be uh, talking about the um, warehouse or office insurance. Um, I personally don't handle a person because I'm I'm from personal lines. I'm not from commercial lines of business. So if in case um, warehouse as well, so it it goes the same way. I can say uh, like how uh, home insurance is, um, but it would be covering the stock of the warehouse. So uh, if a person gets a full comprehensive warehouse insurance, um, it would be covering the stock on their employees, uh, any type of property, all risk, the liability. Uh, liability clause is also covered under home insurance. So God forbid, it, because of a leakage at my apartment or at leakage, uh, a leakage of um, or a fire at the warehouse, my neighboring property is also damaged. Uh, same goes for home. If uh, due to a uh, leakage in my apartment or a property, my neighboring property is also um, damaged. My insurance company can pay for the repairs of the neighboring apartment or the neighboring uh, warehouse as well. But it's actually on the higher side or riskier side to uh, cover a warehouse because um, the risk is higher. The insurance company actually goes and does the survey even before providing any coverage, uh, I mean, intimation of the terms. They want to see if there are precautionary measure, if there are sprinklers, if there are fire extinguishers available on site. So God forbid, in case of a, um, unseen um, circumstances, in case of a fire or water damage, there are um, things which can be taken into consideration to minimize the damage. Yes. so. Uh, that was uh, pretty much it for a uh, warehouse insurance. Uh, same goes for office insurance as well. So we are all based in office, right? So we have our uh, computers, we have our stocks, we have our things around us, our chair table and stuff. So what my insurance comp uh, sorry, my, my office will consider would be, they want to just insure these things which are owned by them right? They don't own this office. They don't own the building structure, right? So they will just insure the stock or the um, things inside the office. It can be the server room. It can be the pantry, whatever things that they own. Same goes for like we are professionals. Um, we provide services, right? So our insurance, uh, our office will consider a professional indemnity. That, that means like in case if we provide any wrong um, advice to our client, which is not good for the client and something goes wrong with the client with regards to medical, with regards to life. And the client can actually sue us saying we did not provide them accurate information or they, we did not provide them with accurate uh, advice. So we have a policy in place where our insurance company can pay for the um, cost of uh, the law, uh, law case that the client will sue us um and same would be for you guys chartered accountancy if i'm not wrong there has to be a professional indemnity if i'm not wrong um so yeah that was pretty much it with regards to the insurances that we handle um apart from this if in case um if ruby wants to add in or if such wants to add in with regards to his 
um sorry i'm just getting a call on my phone that's the reason it just went down sorry thank you um, maria thank you so much no problem. Uh, no problem. for taking the session i'm sure with uh, such a um, such a scenario with uh, claims all around the place you must be getting call and i think it is very important to help uh, in people in need at this moment yes yes exactly while while so nice actually talking to, now uh, as well i'm getting so many us calls as to well. educate thank us. you Yeah, thank you, sir. Just be a little bit more with us. And this is definitely very important for us to have you here with us. So thank you very much. And uh, please take a virtual round of applause from all of us. A great session. Thank you very much. So we'll move to the uh, next part of the agenda. Um, one second. We'll move to next part of the agenda with the next speaker because we want to use the speaker's time more in the Q&A session. So we just have to keep going forward. So our next speaker for today is Mr. Sachit Sivadas. And he's going to cover the topic factors to consider for, for in the insurance policy. And to formally introduce him, please join me in wel welcoming our dynamic uh, C. Amit Khetan. So Amit Khetan ji, please, uh, can you do the formal introduction and over to you? Yes, sure. Uh, thank you so much, Rishi, first of all, uh, for giving this opportunity and good afternoon to everyone. And Rishi, I'm sure you must be reminded of our old days during uh, Sundar Nuraniji's time, like we used to do these meetings uh, virtually more for the members. And uh, thanks to uh, Sachit as well uh, for joining us and for the session on a short notice. So without taking much time, I'm just formally introducing him. Mr. Sachit Sivdas is an experienced senior executive with 20 years of uh, varied professional experience in the insurance industry. Skilled in business planning, strategy, technology solutions, reinsurance, and management. He has proven capabilities in compliance, operational efficiency, underwriting results, and profitability. Mr. Sachidar uh, is fostering positive business relationships to expand opportunities for increasing revenue and client base with a proven track record with brokers, insurers, and reinsurance market. He is expertise in engineering, property, casualty, marine, and financial classes of insurance and hands-on experience of risky surveys. He has experience in marketing of various insurance classes from a technical perspective. Mr. Sachit, new product development and product life cycle maintenance by vetting new product ideas from both internal and external sources, developing and implementing best practices. Experiencing in designing and underwriting appetite guidelines, forms, forms, uses, terms, and conditions, training, and communications. Underwriting license with IT operations, HREs, finance, marketing, and claims. He has mentoring the team and provide leadership with the consulting management style, insisting on focus and delivery of objectives. And we would more like to hear from the horse mouth. So please welcome with a virtual round of applause, Mr. Sachit Sivadas. Over to you, Sachin. Thank you, thank you, Amit. It's, uh, it's 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 quite a quite a long intro that I got. I don't think it's something like that. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with the members of the ICAI. Thank you, uh, uh, Madiha. It is it is a very uh, you know very enlightening session that you gave. Uh, I would uh, on my part my uh, task is to give some idea on the or some insights on property insurance and elements related to the property insurance. Uh, I'll try to be as elaborate as possible. Um, if at all you have any queries, uh, any clarifications are needed, please please do let me know during the Q and A session. I'll do my best to answer your queries. Now the uh, the session, I would like to break it into four parts, like uh, what is asset or property insurance? Uh, what are the types of uh, asset or property insurance? And how does this insurance work, uh, property insurance? And what do we need to consider? Factors that we need to consider for this. Uh, property insurance per se, it's, it's actually a very broad term for a series of insurance covers or policies, to put it that way which provides protection to the property. Now, what is property? Property is fixed floating assets, anything that has been paid for. And it is 
it is owned by you okay, or you are responsible for it. Uh, it could be a building, like Madhya said, it could be a warehouse, it could be the stock. But uh, is it only property owners? No. You need not necessarily be a property owner in the generic sense to be able to purchase a property insurance. A tenant is also a property owner. Uh, when it comes to the furniture and his interior decor, like we all have offices, the tables, the chairs, we may not be necessarily owning the office, but we, were, we are renting it out, but these are our assets. So we are the property owner for these assets. That is also considered as property. And the owner of that assets is considered as a property owner. Now, what is the type of property insurance? There are very many, like I said, it is a very broad uh, name, property insurance. There are many types of property insurance. There is the very simple and the first insurance of property which was given was fire insurance. It covers only two perils. By perils, we mean reasons of a loss. So the first is fire, as the name suggests. And the second is lightning, only two. Either there should be a loss due to fire or it should be due to lightning. Then it evolved into something else. There is fire, lightning, and burglary came into play. So in addition to the first two, we have burglary. What is burglary? Burglary is any act where it's an act of theft. We all know what is an act of theft. But it is accompanied by an element of violence. Not necessarily a physical action of violence. Even a threat is considered as a burglar. Now, we all have seen in the mo movies and we might have read in the news, bank holdups. There is a, only a threat of violence. Somebody comes in barging with a gun or a knife, but they don't actually shoot. They show the weapon and they get the uh, assets, the money, whatever it is. So that is burglary. There is an element of th th threat. There is an element of violence. So that is, the, that is one added peril which was evolved into the fire insurance. Then along with this, later came something called allied perils. Now, in this part of the world, in the Middle East generally, two, two types of property insurances are uh, largely sold, largely purchased, at least on a commercial side. One is the fire and allied perils insurance. And the second is the property all risk insurance. Now, fire and allied perils, as the name suggests, we did mention about fire there is a set of perils which is called as allied perils. Now, what is allied perils? You have allied perils like storm, which we are all seeing in the recent past, flood, volcanic eruptions, earthquake, uh, aircraft impact. If there is a, there is a like we have seen in uh, uh, how we saw on uh, uh, September 11, 2001, there was a aircraft impact to a building, World Trade Center. That is an aircraft impact. There could also be a situation where aerial devices are dropped onto your asset. Uh, nowadays, we are seeing drones, usage of drones for pleasure and commercial purposes. Some of these drones could uh, lose their connectivity and they could just fall to the ground. Uh, it could fall onto an asset which is owned by a person. It could be, a, uh, you know, maybe it's a, it's, an, it's a music system or it could just crash through his window. So these are aerial devices dropped that it is uh, considered as a insurable peril. Kit. And uh, impact by vehicles, a car can come and hit into a building. It can break a glass. We see that uh, very often nowadays on the roads. Uh, somebody is navigating a turn. He's unable to control his car. He goes and rams into the nearby showroom. That's an impact by a vehicle. Even horses and cattle was also considered uh, under this policy, impact damage, bursting of pipes. We all have, uh, you know, multi-story buildings where there's a pipe leakage. The water seeps into the floor. It uh, falls into the next floor. There is carpet damage. There is furniture damage. You have wet paper. You have wet files. So these are the kind of allied perils that are covered under the fire and allied perils policy. Now the other policy is property orders. Now before I get into property orders. One thing we have to understand here is this is a named perils policy. By a named peril policy, the perils that are covered under this policy is named. 
you like the name suggests there is fire and there is the allied purpose other than that everything is excluded as such this is a more economical or i would put it it's a more cheaper policy cost wise it is more economical to purchase this policy because the covers are limited or rather named i won't say limited it's named these are the perils that are covered and it is named the other policy that is sold in this market is property all risk now as the name suggests it is an all risk policy now the working of this policy is the inverse to the fire and the right perils policy in the fire and the right perils policy you have certain perils that are covered rest everything is not covered but in a property all risk policy it is the other way around everything is covered except certain exclusions that are detailed in the policy so this is a more wider cover and as such this is the more expensive of the two because it provides a wider coverage now what is excluded elements like property in course of manufacture you cannot take a property orders for a building which is being constructed or for a machinery that is being erected uh once the machinery is erected tested and it is running then it is eligible to be covered under a property policy but while it is being installed it cannot be covered property in transit is not covered that there is a specialized policy for covering goods in the movement then uh, money the physical currency notes coins checks uh exchange bonds these are not covered uh again theft as a theft without an act of violence is not covered under a property all risk policy now while i gave you an example of what is an act of violence and a burglary i'll give you an example of theft as well now it's in so, sometimes we see in jewelry stores the smaller ones not the big ones uh you can see that uh, they would have displayed around 10 or 15 pieces in front of the uh, prospective customer and he quietly pockets one unit one piece and walks away now that there is no violence there there is no threat there there is no physical violent action there it is just a small theft that is not covered under fire and alert perils and neither in property insurance because that is not considered as something which involves violence so these are the kind of two policies that are most relevantly sold in this market or which is available in this market but that does not mean that the other covers are not available if you so wish to you can always purchase a fire and lightning insurance only you can go for a burglary insurance in itself you do not want the fire cover you do not want the all risk cover you just want a burglary cover that is also possible but by and large a good 80 to 90% of the policies that are sold property policies in the in this market as well as the neighboring markets are either fire and alert perils or a property all risk insurance now one very very glaring difference between these policies is just one peril it's it's very easy to understand that way. property all risk covers accidental damage fire and alert perils does not cover accidental damage i'll give you a simple example if there is a movement within the office you're rearranging the furniture and somebody he you know let's say drops a piece of equipment let's say a photocopy machine or uh, somebody bangs into a, a cubicle which is got glass on it and there is a damage that is accidental damage that is not covered under fire and alert perils but that is covered under property all risk insurance now the third element of this policy is how does it work how does property all risk work or how does fire and alert perils policy work how do we go about it the first step is understanding what do you need to cover you may run a business what do you need to cover now you should understand what do you stand to lose should something happen to this business in terms of a flood or a fire you have your fixed assets and you have your floating assets the floating asset is obviously your stock the fixed asset is your furniture fixtures maybe some equipment within your uh, business enterprise so you need to value this now how do you value these you have to take the cost incurred to purchase these items and a lump sum of all these costs would be your sum insured under the policy it can be various headers for example the stock value is so much so much your tables and chairs as furniture is so much you have uh, two or three forklifts it is so much so all this put together becomes a sum insured now while 
selecting the sum insured, there is the, this is a factor to be considered while taking the insurance that comes into the data part, but I'll just touch upon it, that the sum insured should always represent the new replacement value. I'll come into it in detail uh, in the next portion of the uh, presentation, which is the factors to be considered when buying insurance. Now, property insurance is always on a new for old basis. The, the fire and delayed perils and property insurance. That is why the uh, sum insured should be considered on a new replacement value. Uh, the company, the insurance company, has the option to either repair, reinstate, or replace the damaged asset. Now, if you do come across a situation where there is a damage to one of the assets, you the company can either tell you, okay, we will repair it for you or they will replace it with a, another item. So the, that, the, the option is to, uh, you know, uh, left to the company, but they will be not doing it without consultation with the insured. Now I'll move into the fourth element of property insurance, which is the factors to be considered. The most important factor to be considered when purchasing a property insurance is the sum insured. What do you put as the sum insured? Now, I did mention that the sum insured should be the new replacement value of your asset. Now, by new replacement value, I do not mean the book value, or I do not mean the cost that you have spent while purchasing it, maybe two or three months or eight to 10 months back. It is what would it cost to purchase today when you're purchasing insurance. The reason being, I did mention that property insurance is on a new for uh, old basis or a new replacement value. If something were to happen to that asset, the, a policy is for 365 days, it's for one year. So let's say hypothetically a policy is purchased on the 1st of January and the damage happens on the 30th of December. The policy has already run 364 days. Now, the value of that asset could have actually increased or the, the new purchase value of that asset could have all really increased by the time. If we were to consider a building, maybe the cost of cement and steel would have gone up many times during that 364 days of tenure of the policy. So the sum insured should always represent what would it cost on the last day of the policy. So basically you have to factor in an element of inflation because it is on a new for old basis. It is not on depreciated value. If you remember, your motor insurance is on an agreed value or a depreciated value because every year there is a depreciation of 20, 15 or 20 percent. The reason being, uh, when the vehicle meets with an accident and when the repairs are being done, if it is a two or three year old vehicle and it is not within an agency repair, they use second hand parts. So the parts that is being replaced into your vehicle is as old as what was the damage part. But in property insurance, it is not that way. We cannot go and buy a, let's say, two-year-old or five-year-old photocopy machine. It, it has to be a new one. Or we cannot uh, try to construct a building with four-year-old cement and four-year-old uh, steel. It doesn't work that way. So the values have to be the new replacement value. The anomaly in this, in this part is stock. Stock is not on new replacement value. It is not on depreciated value. It is on your purchase price. Because, uh, and you cannot factor in your uh, element of uh, your margins of profit when insuring stock. The reason being, insurance is not for profit. If at all something should happen, the essence of insurance is to put you back in the same position immediately before the loss. So what were you before, immediately before the loss? That is the intention. So there is no margins for profit or, uh, you know, some gains out there, it doesn't work that way. So stock has to be in, uh, insured for purchase price. And this price, the purchase price is already done. So your market may go up or down, your selling price may go up or down, that's different. But you are to insure it for your purchase price. That is how the valuation is done. This is the factors to be considered. Then another factor that you need to consider when buying insurance is, or running your insurance, you've bought your insurance, but there's always a policy maintenance. A policy is for 365 days or more, depending on what kind of policy it is. There is also an element of policy maintenance. Your business way would be going in different angles. You know, you may have acquired this set of stock, you may have 
diversified into another branch you may have opened up another office your policy needs to be maintained so all these things that are happening to your business needs to be incorporated in your policy for example stock there could be businesses with seasonal stock increases now they have would have its seasons and on an average every month they keep let's say a million or 2 million worth of stock but in the peak season they keep 5 or 10 million now your sum insured might have been 2 million when you took the policy but after the fifth or sixth month it has reached 10 million so you need to keep track of that and increase your stock value under the policy so that your interests are adequately protected because if there is a loss on that day you stand to lose 10 million whereas if you were to have a sum insured of only 2 million you would be underinsured by 8 million so maintenance of the policy is very important and it's a very important factor to be considered when you have and when you have buying insurance is not the end of it you know you need to maintain that insurance you need to keep track of what is happening in your business what do you need to do to up, upgrade or no i won't say update it is update your insurance policy you may have uh, uh, for example in a group life policy i'm deviating from property but for example in a group life policy you might have insured 20 employees you may have added five more employees you need to add them to the policy so this sort of policy maintenance is also a very important factor to be considered then uh, as soon as any any amendment to the policy is understood it has to be declared immediately to the insurance company and a confirmation obtained because that is what may uh, you know be the differentiating factor when a loss happens have you declared it properly or not but there have been many claims where the insured themselves were not I mean, at least the uh, managing office was not aware that they had an inflow of stock into their warehouse maybe just two or three days before the actual event of loss because there could be situations where the orders are they arrive earlier than normal it is there in the port and the shipper just gives it away to your warehouse you mean the operating office may not be aware of it. but these are controls and systems which every business establishment have to keep so that they can analyze their movement of their fixed and floating assets so that their interests are adequately protected for insurance purposes so this is a a very generic brief of how property insurance works and what is expected out of an insured to maintain or manage a property insurance policy uh i can if there is anything further that you need to ask uh, please throw me the questions during the q and a session and i'll be more than happy uh amit your son is very cute he's laugh he's giving us a smile very <laughs> thank you uh, thank you uh, sachit for the informative session for the property i think we lot we have lots of question coming in already on this but we are going to cover that later during the session uh, so I, i think it's time to move to the next speaker so then we we'll have ample time for the q and a later on thank you thank you very much thank you very much and a virtual round of applause from all of us thank you thank you very much everybody right uh, okay so let's welcome our next speaker for today miss ruby selly who is going to give a overall experience in the insurance industry which she has uh, seen in the recent past uh, to formally introduce her please join me in welcoming our charismatic exco member ca ashna ashna over to you for the introduction please thank you rishi first of all uh, the topic is such that you know uh, it's not like a some something that you should be saying oh great discussing a topic it is something where we are uh, most of the people are stuck here in uae it's a natural calamity but these calamities always teach us something as to be resilient in life we have to have a strong heart and a clear mind and insurance is something you know let helps us to plan and protect our assets all our life what do we do we earn to save we create our assets and then such calamities is comes and you know we have to we have a painful time seeing uh, these things around us the insurance is helping us to protect it so it's a time one has to really think if these are going to come more stronger and nature is going to disrupt so many things that is better to have insured and it at better to have a informed decision how insurance can be taken today we have amongst us ruby sally she is a financial consultant 
and she has an opportunity to study some of the best institutes in USA, India, and Nepal as well. Ms. Ruby Sally has done her master's in the commerce from Delhi University. She's also a certified financial advisor. She has been on the table of many of the boards. She's also been an administrative board member of the Indian Business and Professional Council. She has had many accolades as a professional in her kitty. She has been given several awards. If I have to list, there are many there. She's a qualified for premier conference. She has been an awarded by the new broker for the year award. She has got a winner of Futura Challenge. And there are many there. She's been living in UAE from 1988. So she has seen UAE from the thick and skin. So over to you, Ruby, to guide us and you know to take us through what should be the options that members should keep in mind before taking this insurance. Thank you so much, Ashna, for the lovely introduction. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank you for having me here today and with this uh, prestigious community. Thank you so much. Mm, yes, um, I would just start with telling you what is an insurance policy? What is insurance? It is a way, the way you manage your financial risk. Let's see, when I get up from here, from the table, I might fall, there is a risk. When I take my car, I'm on the road, there is a risk of accident or uh, you know any kind of uh, mishap. Even while I'm traveling. So these are the insurance company helps everyone, all of us to uh, safeguard these kind of financial uh, risk which come which may come across to us. The, uh, with my experience, what I have noticed that members they lack in selecting a particular policy. So it is very, very important for us, first of all, to check what is our need, whether my need is that I have to take a travel policy when I'm going abroad and it should cover my uh, different uh, aspects for how many days I'll be going. So different concerns are very, very important and you have to select the, light, uh, the correct policy. The next thing comes into consideration is the cover details, whether I need a, a local policy or a geographical policy. Even the whether I need contents or a structure policy in a home insurance policy, fire, theft, and this natural disasters, as you, we have recently uh, experienced. So it is very, very important that we have to select a motor policy where, which is the comprehensive one and it covers the natural disasters so that we are already prepared beforehand. Also, it's very, very important to know which insurance provider you are selecting with. The insurance provider company should be a reputed ones, financially stable company, the good reputation should be there and it should be a good company where we know the financial strength is there. Also, there are, as Madiha highlighted, that in Dubai, the car insurance is mandatory. Yes. So similarly, we have to select those policies, any kind of general insurance policies, which you know, which are being regulated by UAE law. And in many of the policies, there are certain options which members are not aware of that we can add certain level of benefits, like. Uh, in a motor insurance policy, you can add roadside assistance and GCC cover. So many times we have to be very careful and check the policy details, whether if I'm going to the GCC countries, the coverage should be there in my policy. And there is also a delay I have experienced in many companies in their claim process. So one aspect which a member should keep in mind and check with the financial advisor that what is the claim process, whether it is a smooth process and what is the turnaround time for that? Is it easy? Some companies, they have portal where the client, the member can immediately log in and get the details. So we have to see how quick is their claim process of the company. Many companies provide some discount on the renewal process. And also there is a cancellation process. 
before selecting any company for any particular product of insurance, we need to check whether there is a renewal um, discount is there or what is the renewal process. And many time, if you cancel a policy during a year, is there any uh, refund on pro rata basis? For example, I'll tell you, I came across few clients, like they said, we are traveling after a month, but my date has got changed for two months. So can I change it? Yes, you can change. We, you have to inform the insurance company immediately that your travel dates have been changed and get that details changed to the uh, exact date where you are traveling. That is also very, very important in, in deciding. Good market standing is also a very important factor in selecting one of the insurance company. Many companies, they have mostly all the companies for different products of general insurance, they have exclusions like um, war and uh, you know different kinds of, of exclusions. Uh, one should always make a note of those exclusions, whether any particular uh, policy benefit is under exclusion or it is covered for me in case I need that policy cover later during the year. A uh, few of the companies also provide with the no claim bonuses. So I would recommend all the members to check with the, their financial advisors if there is any no claim bonuses. So they should opt for, you know, uh, those kind of companies which may help them to reduce their premium as well. Deductible is also another factor which I recommend that in every policy, mostly the policies they have deductible, which is the amount which the member will pay from his pocket. So we have, I, I need to see whether this particular amount is affordable for me or uh, what is the scenario, what are the different options available. Many times member also, my clients come across, they do not understand the policy. So it's very, very important. You should understand the full policy details. What are, what is covered and what is the uh, benefit of levels which are under exclusions. And regularly one should review your policy. That is also very, very important. So what are my message to everybody is, there is another factor Many times I come across with clients, my members, they say we want a cheaper policy. So what I would recommend that always compare different policies. We should compare Apple to Apple. It's not like, like maybe one policy is cheap, may, uh, cheaper than the other, but that policy may not be giving you the same level of benefits, which is given by the other policy, which is little expensive. By compromising on the uh, money part, maybe later during the year, I will not get that claim. So it's very important. I should not be going against, uh, going uh, with the pricing of the policy that, okay, yes, I sh should compare it, but it should be compared apple to apple. So in other words, insurance is buying what I feel and I tell my clients always that insurance is like an umbrella. If I have an umbrella with me, I buy and I keep it in a car with me always whenever I go there. In case there is a need, I have an umbrella and I'm covered and I'm, as, I'm at peace of mind so that I know I'm covered for my car insurance. I know the uh, rains are coming up next week. It is already told to us. So I want to prepare myself and keep the umbrella with me so that I'm ready for it. Thank you so much. Please let me know if you need me to cover any more information. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ruby, for the uh, for the wonderful uh, uh, you know perspective from different angles. I'm sure there's a lot of value which we have to take from you during the Q and A session, which we are going to start now. So I'm just gonna put on spotlight all the speakers and and the chairman, so we can start with the Q and A session. We have a lot of questions already. Uh, with us on the chat window and I encourage everybody to please keep writing because the main uh, uh, purpose of today's session is to have a Q&A session. We have nearly an hour from now to cover it and we'll see how far we can uh, take up the questions. So I'm just adding um, uh, the, the, the people into the spotlight here. And in the meantime, Chairman Saab, if you want to say some few words. 
So thank you very much uh, for all the our speakers. So covering their respective part of the <coughs> subject, and now I think it is a very important session for all of us to address our specific question and specific detail which we want to know from the expert. And once again, thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Sachit. Thank you, Avya, uh, yeah, for coming and addressing our members at very short notice and sharing your knowledge or wisdom to the members. So you, over to the members and the this is to take okay. the questions and right. Thank you very much, uh, Samani ji, for the for the for your uh, note on that one. So I'll just start with the questions here. So I'll request the. Uh, the speakers to please uh, you know keep yourself unmuted and just pick up the question which i think you have a good answer to uh, i think this one first of all will be suiting for madhya which says that most insurance companies are not giving comprehensive cover for cars which are more than seven years old even if the car is maintained from an authorized agent so uh, can you please tell us like is there a policy is there a policy for such uh, cars or this is some is just a myth no, it's a myth. There are insurance companies who give comprehensive insurance up to 15 years. And uh, I'll give you an example of our own car. Uh, we have three cars at home and one is more than 15 years. So we actually continued with the same insurance companies, uh, company, sorry. Um, and because they had our history already, they know how we have been driving the car. Uh, we are insured through them since 2012. So even after 15 years, they are still giving us comprehensive insurance. So yes, uh, even if it's a, a car which is more than seven year old, you can still get comprehensive insurance up to 15 years. Um, like um, insurance company like GIG, I'll name, if in case a car value is below 10,000, they don't give comprehensive insurance, even though it's like a 11 year old, 12 year old car. But yeah, there are others who give up to 15 years. And see, my own car, uh, I have more than 15 years, I still have comprehensive insurance. So yeah, it's a myth. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you, Madhya. Madhya, I think uh, if somebody is facing issue, they should go and uh, check more to find the right insurance uh, provider who yes. can give it and the insurance broker could be the right person to guide you. So far, and then going to the next question, though somebody asked, I think it's a very genuine question. Even it happened with uh, one of our drivers also. Basically, when the rain was pouring and the water is everywhere, so he stopped the car in the middle of the road and he kind of just uh, uh, gone to safety, basically. And then he also got a RTA ticket. So now the question we have, which has been asked is, what if a ticket is issued in this climate while the car was damaged, will that be covered as well by the insurance company? So what do you what do you think, uh, Mr. Sachet or Ruby? Will see how you want to uh, take it. It will not. Be. I will. I will actually start. Uh, this uh, insurance company will not pay for any of the fines that are imposed by the government. So that's a no no by the insurance company. But um, I don't know personally. I feel that that shouldn't be the case. The uh, government should not be imposing. Uh, fines and all during such situation. What do you have to say, Sachit, about it? No, I, I totally second you. Here. The fines and penalties, not only in motor insurance, in any insurance, fines yeah. and penalties are not payable. Right, okay. Yeah, I think this is something which I'm sure U.S. Gujarati government is always helping uh, the people in need. So they will come out with the policy. Of course, the people who are cutting the tickets, they don't know about the policy at that stage. So let's wait and watch. I'm sure uh, things will turn out for us. So coming to the next, uh, next question. So this question is about how about water damage to the machines in the factory due to this heavy downpour? We have an all risk insurance for the factory and the machinery. So will th this kind of a thing will be covered? This is asked by Shri Ram. So Sachit, if you want to take this up. Yeah, sure. Yes, uh, Shri Ram, this, this peril or this damage, the water damage to the machinery inside the factory is covered. If you have an all-risk policy, it is covered. It's a water damage claim. It is covered. If the machinery is damaged due to the water, uh, it, it, it will be paid. Right. So what is the procedure for claiming this? Do they have to go to their insurance company or the broker yeah. or how? The first task to do is if you are uh, insured through or there is a broker to service your uh, insurance, inform the broker immediately with maximum possible information. If there is a 
uh, if the damages are visible maybe we can send some photographs or maybe some video of the uh, flood or water damage into the uh, factory and then register a claim now the broker will inform the insurance company and the insurer may send their own risk engineer to assess the damage or they will appoint a third party loss adjuster who will be assessing the damage and you know he's an expert he or she would be an expert in understanding the type of machinery it is or uh, what kind of repair works are needed and then the insured has to arrange for repair quotations maybe more than three more than two quotations at least and depending on that the negotiations will happen and based on that the approvals for the claim payment will be made by the insurance company right thank you so is there any time limit time limit for this or uh, it can be any time uh, that that needs to be looked at on a policy level because some policies have a condition that all claims have to be reported within a period of x amount of days you know that mm. could be as uh, small as 7 it could be as uh, large as 60 also so that depends so it's always advisable to report losses at the earliest even if you are not aware of the extent of losses it is advisable to notify that there is a damage there is a loss at least that part is done so the notification is made then you can elaborate and you can uh, always give further details that is that is fine but the first notification should go at the earliest right thank you so much so samani ji are you there yes you yes, samani ji i just want to say my network is little unstable so in case i get disconnected because of this weather condition the network sometimes goes off so please uh, if you can take up the question if i get disconnected just wanted to alarm you yeah yeah it, jay yeah, is also so, there so, they will take a I also message Jai Bai. So Jai Bai, you are there. I just put you also in the spotlight. I think it's we need to see no. you because create a different no, kind of a yeah. So I'll just keep you also here in the loop. Uh, so I'll just take up uh, the next question. So Jai Bai, just in case I get disconnected, please take it up. Okay. So the next question is from Viren Bhatia. He says that um, does home insurance necessarily have to include contents also? Like we take a home insurance, we generally just take him insurance. Do we have to really mention what all contents are in the insurance policy or not really? So, what do you think, Ruby, about this? Yeah. In case uh, you are taking the content insurance, then in, you need to specify what is the limit of jewelry, how much is the actual value of jewelry, your exclusive watch. the paintings and all the contents it's not necessary but uh, uh, but uh, would you please clarify what is the scenario is the home owned by the uh, person and he would that is the question sorry so it is uh, yeah you can consider that way i mean uh, that i have my home yeah home and i would like to uh, cover the contents so what all you he is asking he would like to know what all uh, needs to be covered am i right that's correct yeah, yeah so let's let's look at both let's look at both rishi has its own house so he can i am on rent rent i want to cover the content can i do that yes you can uh, do the contents and you need to specify there suppose you have your laptops your jewelry you know lying in the house you have uh, expensive paintings on the floor on the on the wall so whatever you think are the expensive items those values you will have to declare them and on the basis the insurance company will provide you with the quotation so okay. you will have to you would like you had to declare that just a follow up question on declarations whether this has to be a valuation certified by some valuers or the valuations which we say becomes the valuation for all these contents uh if you have the receipts with you it will be best but suppose if you do not have the receipts maybe the jewelry was taken 10 15 years before and you do not have the receipts in that case you may please go to the jeweler and get the receipts there is a limit i think ma madiha will be able to assist us madiha what is the limit for the home insurance uh, those contents how much yes, above, yes. Um, up to what limit you are not allow you should not be providing the receipts so any single item which is above 10000 has to be listed and receipts are applicable so anything a single item say a ring which, which is costing around 8000 dirhams or 9000 dirham and another ring which is costing 25000 dirhams so 25000 has to be ad, uh, listed and the receipt for that should be provided only in case of a claim okay uh, i understand that i will bring sachit also because sachit was talking about depreciation and some stuff uh, like furniture right furniture is also contained in the house so sachit mm -hmm. you are talking about depreciation we are, i have a receipt it says okay i spent 25000 on the furniture 
but it's almost five years. As an insurance company, do you also come consider depreciation? Gold, I understand it goes by market value. In case of furniture and others, do you consider depreciation or it goes with the receipt value, which is on the receipt? It should be the brand new value. You have, if you have, if you have purchased a piece of furniture 10 years back, and let's say you have paid 1,000 dirhams for it, or let's say 5,000 dirhams for it 10 years back. Today, to buy that, that very same item, it may cost maybe a couple of hundred more. Mm -hmm. You should be insuring it for that couple of hundred more. Ah, oh, okay, right, makes sense. Because we 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 cannot give you as an insurer, we cannot let's say that entire item is damaged, destroyed. We cannot give you a ten year old furniture to replace it. We have to give you a brand new one, isn't it? So you're expected to insure the value for a brand new. So can I say market value? You always look at the market value of the item and no, no, according no, 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 new reinstatement value. Which you new, it's called new reinstatement value. It's not market value. Value. That, that's yeah. a good word. Reinstatement. Rishi Bhai, back to you for the next question. I think contents we have covered right. all what questions I could see in right. the chat. Right. So thank you. So basically but, what it means overall is that the, um, the the high value item, you should uh, take categorically an effort to put that across to the insurance company that list. should be listed in insurance. So next question no, is from Mr. Sajid. Pratis. Yeah, Mr. Sachit, uh, one so, again so the follow-up uh, follow-up question is that yeah. suppose I have a furniture I purchased after before five years for ten thousand. Okay. And today the value depreciated value is definitely lower than that. Okay. So suppose if that furniture I have lost, will you pay me the depreciated value or you will pay me the reinstated uh, value of the furniture? What is the sum insured that you have given me? That is why reinstatement value. What is the sum you as yard? No, you sum insured. It say suppose I have given the invoice of the ten thousand dirham. Okay. And I have so five year old invoice. The insurance of ten thousand. The you are you for five years you are continuously yeah, okay. covering it for ten thousand dirhams. Yes. And today it actually costs twelve thousand dirhams to buy a brand new. Yes. You should be insuring it for twelve thousand dirhams. Okay. But do no. you mean? Do you mean that if suppose my depreciated assets, I want to insure at the higher value, I can do it? No, it is always on a new for old basis, Somani. Depreciation is not counted here. But otherwise, what we can do is, like you should be telling your insurance company, say, I only want depreciated value. It's called agreed value. The value of my item is X amount. It is depreciated. The insurance company knows that it is depreciated. They know that they're insuring old items. And in the event there is a replacement needed, they need to pay only for an old item. If that is very clearly mentioned at the time of getting into your insurance contract, it is fine. There are certain companies who do that. I mean, I can give you an example. There are, there are uh, you know, equipment rental companies who have, equip you know, very heavy load equipment, which can run for 25, 30 years. They sometimes do it on, on a depreciated value basis because they have already earned the life, the book value or the book life of that equipment is already over. Whatever it is running into is bonus. So they insure it for depreciated value. But this is a very, very rare case. For all fixed assets, it is always advisable to insure it for new replacement value. I'll just give you a simple example. Uh, the uh, a cost of building a building a one-story building, 10 years back, was something, I, I would say, 10-15% less than what it is today. The cost of cement has gone up, steel has gone up, labor cost has gone up. All the elements have gone up. So, to construct that building today, if the, if the entire building is destroyed, for example, we need to get a new building in place, isn't it? We have, the insurance company can either repair, replace, or reinstate. Now, in this case, the repair is not possible. Replace is not possible. We have to reinstate. So we cannot pay for a 15-year-old cost to construct the same building. There is an element of under-insurance also. I did not get into that because that is going in, in uh, you know, in, into a too elaborated discussion. But the, the, there is a policy condition that the values have to be on new replacement value. Otherwise, the condition of average will apply. Okay. No, but uh, I just such a an example... <laughs> I just give example when we do the car insurance, it is always yes. on depreciated debt. Insurance car company insurance. Insist, yes. insists for the depreciated value. They don't they don't accept any value higher than that. Yeah, the reason being
car insurance is on depreciated value because the uh, let's say that uh, the possibility of a total loss on a car is less the possibility of partial loss is very very high now if uh, if this this uh, mechanism is applied on a car insurance it it uh, it goes against the principle of insurance for example i can tell you let us say you have a 5 year old car I, i won't give your example a person has got a 5 year old car and he's got a, a faulty uh, fan belt okay his fan belt is faulty he needs to replace it it is very easy for him to go and make an accident so that he is benefited with a brand new fan belt <laughs> sachit on the right. same line i mean yeah i'm i have a, on the same line i'm not able to understand one thing it yeah. goes with the furniture as well right say for example i purchase the furniture for 10000 going by your mm-hmm. example okay mm-hmm. i keep it for 3 years or 5 uh, years that is the mm-hmm. maximum life of a furniture assuming 5 years it will complete depreciation Okay. and i am renewing my insurance at a valuation of saying 10000 is my value and according you are charging me a premium and i am mm. getting it renewed on mm. the 6th year right mm. i again pay the premium for the same furniture because i am able to use it and still physically available completely Fine. depreciated at zero value in my books that is that is climate. your book value is zero your book value is book zero. value is zero right yeah. insurance okay. policy is continues at 10000 are you okay. saying that in this case if something happens of god god forward that i will get entire 10000 as a sum back for that furniture because i, I assured it for 10000 assuming market value is 12000 now nowadays because some assured is 10000 oh, some insured is 10000 now uh let me put it this way forget okay. that there is no insurance mm-hmm. okay you have a you have paid 10000 dirhams for a furniture it is destroyed now when it is fully destroyed do you need to per- replace that furniture how much do you need to pay 12000 today 12000 so you need to insure it for 12000 okay okay uh, there, i i leave it to there right now because obviously in interest of we have more questions there Correct. we'll come back okay. before we move further i want to acknowledge our past chairman who is there hanumanta is there uh, uh, hanumanta thank you for joining i could see anish mehta there thank you anish bhai for joining and i could see one more past chairman there who joined i'm not able to recall the name uh, so thank you for all the past chairman who has joined this event and take out time from the busy schedule uh, rishi bhai back to you Yeah, thank you, thank you, Jaya, and thank you to all the members who are staying and asking questions, and at the same time being patient in these difficult circumstances. Uh, thank you for being there for asking these questions because these are helping everybody to, to find answers to these difficult questions. So, in the interest of time, let's move to the next question. So, next question is from Pradeep Singh. So, his question is okay. Uh, like this. Rishi bhai your voice is not clear your voice is not clear i think you need insurance for your wifi uh, that is first thing that you need okay i'll uh, and uh, it there are anything we cannot rishi bhai stranded in the street and uh, no. now he is going back to kind of the um, question is like what is the maximum time to repair the motor car in such kind of situations madhya you want to take this up yes okay <laughs> the only thing the only thing which i understood is like the uh, time the claim has to be registered if i'm not wrong right so um how sachit has mentioned like it should be um advised uh, immediately that there has been a claim but a uh, police report is valid for one month and once the claim is registered within that one month three months time is the uh, repair time within three months the car should be repaired or at least the estimate should be done for the repairs three months is the time rishi bhai are you there three months i think you got dropped because of the network uh, okay no problem i noted that three months is the time pradeep you have to go and get the insurance uh, claim done i move to the next question mustafa has asked this question and first let me read out the question and then uh, we'll go to the uh, speakers how does insurance company determine that the drive in flood was deliberate so person has been driven in the flood and how will insurance company derive that it was deliberate and not work related what is the mechanism they use is the onus on the policy owner to prove that that drive was essential and not leisure who will prove what whose responsibility is it, is it insurance company is it the insurance holder and what is the mechanism of doing it let me first go to sachit sachit there is a smile there he has already done something like that so sachit yes, uh, yeah, i am back here no, uh, thank you sarishi uh, one question uh, we have put uh, from mustafa sachit go ahead please 
uh, uh, in all insurances, the onus to prove the damages or the loss is always on the insured or the policyholder in all insurances. So the insurance company is not going to take a step and say, oh, I, I, I understand that you have had a loss. Shall we step in? They will not do that. It is always the onus is always on the insured. Now, in this situation, we have we have seen a lot of situations now madiha did mention one case where we all saw that video there is water on the road it is quite deep knowingly the gentleman drove into it it is very clear he did it just to test his luck or to test his vehicle not covered okay now if a person is driving on a normal roadway and due to the circumstances his he is unable to move his car and all of a sudden we had this downpour and there is a water uh, water levels have risen, it has seeped into his vehicle and he had to leave the vehicle and abandon it and move away. I would say it is not his fault. It is not his fault. He was riding on a road which was meant to be driven on. He was not driving on a waterway. He was driving on a dry road meant to be driven on because of the flood or because of the accident in front of him or because the traffic was totally jammed. He could not move, he or she could not move further. And because of the downpour, the water came up to, you know, unacceptable levels and he or she had to abandon the vehicle and move away. Now, we have a damage where the person did not do anything to aggravate the loss. He did not contribute to the loss. So, in that case, that is very much a payable case. But, like I said, it is always the onus is on the insured. He should be able to clearly explain it to his policy provider that this is the circumstance that this has happened. And in some cases, it is easy to identify also by a uh, by a risk engineer or a you know a technician on in under what circumstances did this damage happen. So if I there understand. was no yeah, can I say in one word what, what you are trying to say? Are you saying it's all about the story? How good is the story and how truth is? Uh, what is the kind of truth in the story? What how exactly the sequence of events happened to arrive at whether it's deliberate or not deliberate? That is what uh, is the Insurance, yes, one of the one of the primary doctrines of insurance is at the principle of utmost good faith. So okay. we would expect the insured to give a clear and, you know, uh, correct, uh, you know, circumstances of the situation so that the claim can be taken. up. And one more element I can add to this is technicians can find out how this car was damaged or not. If there is water in its, uh, you know, intake and water in the engine, that means it was running while there was water around. If the person has seen that there is water and there is nothing he can do, he's turned off the ignition and moved away, the damage will be superficial and maybe some, uh, you know, maybe some water going into certain parts. But it may not damage it. I'm not a technician myself. But there are ways. I've heard of our, you know, our risk engineers, our surveyors talking in that language. So I can say that it is, there are certain methods to find it. But if it is very evident that there was a water and this guy wanted to test his vehicles, capacity and he drove into it that is not at all a payable i love that part where there are technical specifications which can actually help i i thought madhya who is uh, saying something someone's saying i when yeah, i say Ruby, who, yes. Ruby, yeah, I add one more thing uh when this thing happened so i got a call from one lady that my car is uh, stuck at a place where it is full of water but i am unable to reach the towing companies is it possible i can take it on my expense and tow it away. So that is very, very important that we should not do it. That is also one of the reason they will, they may not, they will not give the cover. Coverage will not be, will be denied. So there should be a proof that the authorized companies, all the authorized towing companies, they should be coming and they should tow the vehicle and bring it to the uh, authorized garage. So this is also very important for everybody and not also, they should not also, she said, we will try to start the car and see if it moves and comes out, out of the water. So I advised her, this is not, uh, uh, it's not good to do that because it will damage the car engine more. So it's better to okay. leave the car and do the needful and inform the insurance company. Okay. Mustafa, for you, the summary is first, everything works in good faith. Do everything in good faith. Second, do with authorized channel. Don't uh, take uh, study channels. Go for authorized channels. And last, there are technical parameters. Technicians will use it to ensure that you have acted in good faith and through authorized channel. That is it. Right. Uh, Rishi Bhai, go ahead with the next one if you are around. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That's the power of unity. I mean, uh, we always step on features. So the network has been bad. But thank you, Jai 
Hi for always covering up for us. You've been a powerful person for us always. So coming to the next topic, I think we have already talked about on this, but uh, Hanish had asked, asked it specifically about the furniture in the office. So office, because there can be expensive furniture in the office. So when we take the insurance policy for the office, do we categorically list the furniture items in the insurance policy? Because this can change over time. You can have new things coming. You could have expensive machines in the office. You could have uh, expensive scanners or printing machines or could be different. And so what's your take on this, uh, uh, Sajid? Uh, there is no need to you know, detail the specifications of each machinery unless the insurance company asks you to. You can put it all under the bracket of furniture, fixtures, and fittings because it's all furniture in everybody's books, copier machines, unless it is used for any other purpose, the regular photocopy machines, printers and all are considered as furniture. So it can be classified as furniture. If the insurance company were to ask you to detail individual itemized list, please provide the same. It depends on that situation, how the insurer wants so to no, have. But uh, Sachi, the question is, how does, for example, imagine there is water in, like my office, there was water inside it. So imagine okay. there is actually lost a machine. And you have mm -hmm. a, say, a 1 million policy on your, say, furniture of your office. Mm -hmm. And it's a possibility that some are new items, some are old items. So how do you really, you know, tackle it with the insurance company? See, uh, see for, when, for that whenever, company? whenever uh, Rishi, whenever there is a loss, the first thing we do is we, nego we, st we start a discussion with the client or the insured, okay? The, like I said, the onus to prove it, prove the loss is on the insured. So we will be asking documents. Like if this is the item that is damaged, when was it purchased? What is the uh, purchase price of it? Or wh where is it on your books? It should show on your uh, asset register. So depending on that, that is how we go about and then go look at the value and analyze whether the values are sufficient enough in compared to the sum insured that has been declared under the policy. And their claim proceeds according to that method. It goes on accordingly. So it is not that, you know, once a claim is declared, we say yes or no, it is payable or not payable. There is a round of discussions. There is, uh, you know, a lot of exchanges between an insurance company and an insured. You know, you, you have to show right. us where, where it has been put into your books, in under which header has it been, uh, since which year has this particular item got into your books, those sort of things. Right. So in this case, like, for example, as a, as a person who has insured his property, now, who they go to? They, do they go to the broker first? They do, do they go to the insurance company? Do they uh, take a third party like an auditor to do the audit uh, for you know listing out the assets? So, what is the a procedure for a layman? If there is a broker involved, it is advisable to uh, get the guidance from the broker because the broker is not just a, a policy provider. He is a he is an advisor as well. So it is always advisable to speak to the broker and give them the update of the policy that there has been a claim. We, how, please advise us how to go further. So the broker can assist you in the claims phases as well, you know, as the claim progresses. But if there is no broker, by all means, you know, every insurance company, uh, there is a claims department. You can uh, inform the insurance company that this is my policy. This is the nature of the claim. And then it continues. Right. Thank you so much. So going to the next question is again about the property insurance. So basically the question is like this, that um, when insuring the house, do, do you really insure at the market price or at the price you purchase it? Uh, and do you really need a valuation report at the time of uh, doing the insurance? It I'll is not this. Yeah, you, Madhya, please go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so uh, for home insurance, um, the structure has to be insured on rebuilt cost, which means like in case um, there is a total loss to the house due to fire, it's down ashes down on the ground, how much material will the person or the insurance company or the builder will take to build the exact same structure? So home insurance is always on the rebuild cost, not on the market, not on the purchase price. Okay, fine. Thanks. So I think, tell uh, me, tell me during this rainy period, if the building or the villa has damaged, yes. will it cover in the uh, property insurance? Yes. Yes. Okay. So there are two things in case if there is um, a leak to be traced, 
that is an exclusion but because of that leak water leak uh, if the contents your furniture your carpet your uh, walls and all are damaged those are claimable under home insurance but if in case someone uh, like you're asking the insurance company to trace the leak where it is leaking and to fix that leak that is not covered uh, but no then, suppose if the because of the rain the wall yeah. of the building or the building floor has damaged or the fall yes. on it yes then, yes it is covered it is covered it is covered okay right. it does not yeah. normally come into the exclusion of the natural calamity no no not at all it is uh, for on the home insurance uh, water damage is covered due to storm and flood it is covered okay right thank you and just one question in this, I think this we are also reading in the newspaper. Does it uh, does does this, this circumstance comes anywhere near force major? Is it is it considered as a force major anywhere? Uh, what do you think about it? No, <laughs> I say no. It's not a uh, okay, right? Because no, there are are okay, fine. Okay, so going to the next question, uh, this is a very unfortunate, unfortunate. Uh, uh, Rishi, I'll just, happened. I'll just get you one more elaboration okay. on that. See, when you have to classify something okay. as force major, uh, the intensity or the scale of damages has to be enormous. It is nothing content, uh, you know, uh, comparable to what we have out here. It it has to be really, you know, great. This is only a okay. city or for some parts of the city is affected. The scale is very large. Okay, so basically uh, this kind of a, uh, you know, statement cannot be issued uh, by the company if at all they wanted to, you know, kind of. Anyway, yeah. moving to the next question. So basically this, this is an unfortunate uh, circumstance that has happened, but life uh, takes you, can happen, anything can happen in life. So the question is uh, that two staff were traveling from work and they were choked in the office uh, office vehicle. So the question is whether they can get blood money for this unfortunate uh, circumstance. Anybody wants to take a talk? Uh, Ruby, you want to take this? No, I'm so sorry. It's uh, it. Uh, I won't be able to comment on this. Right. Okay. I think it's a very unique uh, kind of a question. So we can don't have a ready answer. Rishi, Rishi, can you repeat the question? The question is that there are two staff uh, who were traveling in the vehicle and they were choked. Basically, they kind of passed away in the vehicle due to uh, the whatever situation happened. So the question is, they were in the office vehicle. Can like can they claim blood money from the insurance company uh, for those people? Um, under motor insurance, I'll say yes. Um, the case will still go to the court and the court has to actually um, advise the insurance company to pay. And once the uh, court advises the insurance company, they will pay the blood money, yes. So there is um, coverage of uh, life, not much, but yeah, a bit of it under motor insurance. So yes, it can be claimable under motor insurance, yes. It's it's just an uh, unfortunate incident, yes. So I what, what also... is going to be the procedure in this case? So this... See, in, in this case, again, the police report would be required and a case has to be registered at the court. And then, of course, uh, like the amount, whatever we'll take at the court, uh, it would be based on the court judgment. But is there right. normally limit of the 150,000 tira? 200,000. 200,000. Oh. Yes. Right. Okay, going to the next question because time is precious and we have a lot of questions. The time is not much. So a pedestrian is hit by car and injured. Vehicle third party liability insurance will cover or not? It will cover. A because... pedestrian is moving and hit by a car. Yes, yes. Because uh, third party, uh, even under third party insurance, um, bodily injury is unlimited. So uh, if a person hits a uh, unfortunately someone on the road it would be covered under even though if a person has a third party insurance it will be uh, covered right okay thanks again another question is from Pradhu, uh, Pradhu, Prabhu Kumar so he's saying that if a car is damaged at the service center on account of not timely attended 
by the service service station can this be claimed from the insurance if the service station itself is kind of creating a damage to the car so can in property yeah. in in this case um the service center would have an insurance so it can be claimable under the insurance uh, company of the service center but yes of course the damages they have to pay their insurance company has to pay okay fine right okay so next question is from pradeep uh, kahani he is asking please throw some light on business interruption insurance i understand that it is part of property all risk insurance so can you talk a little bit about sujit on this part like uh, how do you business interruption insurance which policy actually covers this actually the the very name you know it is called a uh, loss of profit or business interruption insurance it is generally purchased together with property insurance some companies issue a separate policy but some companies provide it along with the property insurance if you want it so uh, business interruption you cannot purchase stand alone you need to have a it should always piggy back on a property all risk or a fire insurance policy now what is a business interruption policy is in the event of a, an insured peril let us say uh, we are talking about a factory hypothetically it's a factory there is a fire in the factory and let's say it's a toy factory now the business operation stops now when the business operation stops there are certain standing expenses that the the factory is already incurring like they would have been paying rent which they will have to continue to pay salaries maybe certain fees to the government etc etc these sort of uh, expenses you know fixed standing ex fixed expenses that the company endures or has to pay despite them having zero production is something that is covered under business interruption insurance it is called in other words right. it's called loss of profit it is not it is it's not a loss your, of profit it, it is loss, loss of, of profit, profit policy. policy normally supported by the any event in the factory which is stop the running of the business yes there should be an insured peril and that results yeah. in the uh, disruption or interruption of the business <clears throat> but one question right. to adia that when we are insuring the car number of times after 4 5 years the insurance company insists that your car should be right. covered by the okay. non so uh, basically non the 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 summary summary is that sorry Rishi, i cannot hear you yeah yeah my my question is that yes. sometimes when you insure your car Yes. And if the car is more than five year old, the insurance company insists that you can get your car repair or you can get it uh, uh, corrected in the non uh, non uh, you can say that the non sponsored garage. It's not garage. agency. Yeah, it's not yes. agency. So they, the they, thing they, is, they yeah, they insist it over it. Yes, yes. The problem okay. is that when car goes into the different garages. Yeah. then there is no surety of about uh, quality of the repair or quality the spare the parts repair. they will do yes 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 of course they do have a limit for agency repair it's called agency repair so yes. uh, the older the car would be the higher the cost for agency would be same for the insurance company as well the repair cost under agency would be higher that's the reason for older car they don't want to uh, it's it's a risk factor for the insurance company actually Uh, so they don't want to insure agency cover for older cars so that's the reason they have a limit of 5 years but then some insurance company for some high end car if the warranty um or service uh, history is up to 7 years they can still extend depending on the car model they can extend to give agency repair for 6 up to 7 years but apart uh, 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 apart from that no unfortunately no insurance company can offer agency cover the older the car would be they want you to buy a new car that's it do you or otherwise do you feel that the agency people are charging higher than the require they are they are okay they do <laughs> they do perfect uh, i think rishi is not there let me ask you the next question it comes from a member named rahul rana and it's a interesting question he says they are working as a subcontractor or uh, or his client is working as a subcontractor they got a project as a subcontractor they try to take the insurance 
since they are subcontract they could not get the insurance i don't know but it says since they they were subcontract they could not get the insurance the main contractor had the insurance which is all risk policy now during the current rain which we experienced over the weekend we suffered heavily in terms of already executed work as a subcontractor they delivered some work they did some work but because of the rain they suffered uh, huge losses now how they can claim it can they be covered by the main contractor insurance uh, because they don't have insurance they were not given insurance being subcontractor what is your take first question whether subcontractor can can take insurance it is exceptional or second if he cannot what is his remedy in such cases uh, commercial sajit commercial hai. yeah 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 one second i was just reading through that okay no there is uh it's quite unfortunate that as a subcontractor he was not provided an insurance cover for his works now this is a contractor's all risk policy uh, now a contractor's all risk policy is taken for project works you know you're building a building ground up okay now the main contractor would be the person who has the contract to build the entire structure from scratch till the handover like the completed work but in this part of the world or in, nowadays in every part of the world every project is heavily subcontracted like ac works are given to a subcontractor you know interior decor is to go somebody else and masonry work furniture etc etc but if the main contract now there is a contract value okay now the entire contract including the finished building till the uh, owner gets the handover let us assume it is a 100 million building if the sum insured of the contract is 100 million and if all the subcontracting subcontracted works are also included in this particular policy the 100 million and the main contractor takes a 100 million policy the subcontractor is also covered or his damages are covered because ultimately it is his subcontract value plus the other subcontractors value everything put together that this 100 million is arrived at isn't it so yes, if correct. so if so then it is covered. It is just that the main contractor doesn't want his policy to be triggered and him to, you know, bear the expenses of running around or whatever it is, that he is just shying away from it. But that is if this 100 million is covered in its entirety. But in some cases, what would happen is the main contractor would also be doing a little bit of work. Let us say he's doing only the structural skeletal work. He will take a policy only for that. Hmm. And in that case, this unfortunate subcontractor is not covered because the insurance is only for the structural work, which could be something in the line of 30 to 40 million dirhams. All the other subcontracted works are not covered. But it would be advisable for every subcontractor when they arrive into a subcontracting agreement with their main contractor to clarify what is the insurance requirements. Am I to take mine or will you take for me? I, I got that point. Uh, Sajid, we have that uh, member with us. Rahul, in interest of time, I'm just giving you 30 seconds to explain your case, what exactly it is. What I uh, right to understand from Sajid is you have to go to the main contractor, go to the insurance policy, whether the entire subcontract is covered or not. So that is basically how exactly the insurance has been taken. 30 seconds, you want to add something new input yes. to it. Thank you, Jay Bhai. Thank you, Sachit. Uh, in our case, we beforehand check with the main contractor and okay. our case, they have covered our value with them. So I would okay. like to know how to claim it. That is a major question. Uh, you, so he knows if, that if, he's covered. Okay. If your values are already covered. Yes. Okay. There is no reason why this damage should not be put, at least picked under the policy, regardless of whether it is a payable claim or not. I do not know the merits of the claim, but at least to put a claim under the policy, you have to prevail upon your main contractor to inform the insurance company that such a thing has happened and it has happened to our subcontractor. This is the details of the claim. You can give some photographs or you know videos or something like that and a write-up of what your nature of loss is. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, Rishi Bhai is back. Rishi Bhai, go, go ahead with the next question, please. Right. Thank you very much, Jai again for stepping in. Uh, so this question Again, Rishi, I think Rishi, your voice is not clear. Uh, Jay, you continue, please. Okay, Rajesh, yeah, let me continue with the question. Interesting please. question. There's a question Malia, somebody has asked. Mr. Amit Arora has asked. Can you okay. repeat Rishi question because your voice was broken? 
ಇನ್ಶೂರೆನ್ಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ is Madhya, covered can you, yes, you want to take yes, it because yes. it's normal not an accident it's, it's something it's happened. an it's an act of uh, nature as well we'll consider that so police report is required it's the same police report uh, to whom it may concern and a photo of the damages and insurance company will register the claim and it is claimable i actually received two of these claims uh, yesterday so yeah it is claimable oh okay. Yeah. it one let me extend this question madhya a little bit because we have seen this right. uh, multiple times in ua uh, at least in dubai there are people uh, i mean we all know there are uh, bachelors who live in one apartment and everyone has a car right normally every apartment gets one or two parkings so few parkings they use that in the parking lot they have a yearly license or yearly uh, i mean yearly pass and they will park in the parking lot or they will park in the street parkings during the rains there has been damages reported either on the uh on the car or on the metal plates or something fell on it so are they tenable because they were standing in the open in a parking lot uh, and they were not in uh, in a building what what is the nature of how exactly you ensure that in one apartment there are six cars because there are six bachelors living two is getting the parking in the parking lot four is parking outside and this calamity happens what is the take of insurance company does it bother them or it is okay wherever you parked you have taken all the cautions yeah uh, it doesn't really um, matter with the insurance company the only thing it should be it should be parked in designated place like it should be in a parking lot not like uh, how we say kacha road yeah ah, so okay. that would be on uh, uh, the insurance company can say no no to that that's also not 100% they might consider it uh, because uh, the cars on the roads are more than Uh, anything now if we say the traffic and all so yeah they can consider in sa- that condition as well but it doesn't really matter for the insurance company to, to where the car is parked but uh, and if the proper precaution has been taken by the insured then of course it is claimable under insurance see for example oh. uh, if, for example if in case the uh, car is parked under uh, under construction area yeah and something falls on the car uh, from the construction site then that is a very gray area on which the insurance company can say sorry um you are not supposed to park here it's not as designated it's not a parking space right so they can actually decline a claim um in such situation but apart from that no not really okay. as human brain we have so many questions we take everything as a risk and that's why all these questions comes up one interesting right. session, uh, one interesting question i will let me put i have seen from shil bhatia and this question is also interesting he says we are from fnb industry okay in fnb industry damage is due to water accumulation in the warehouse because of the rains water got accumulated in the warehouse and the inventory got damaged pre packaged cartoons are wet so the cartoons which were used is completely wet will the stock be considered damaged or will the surveyor open the cartoons and pay only for repacking repacking may not be pay- possible because these are branded items so what is your take if warehouse has water accumulation my packings are gone my pre packaged cartoons are completely wet goods might have damaged may not have damaged i am not sure we not explaining the question but whether you will only pay for the repacking i mean as an insurance company only for the repacking or you will replace uh, the entire cost of the goods that depends on the merit of that loss uh, j because mm. if only the carton is damaged let's say from you know uh, uh, you know from looking outside the package it's the carton is wet okay mm. the carton is wet but inside the item is packed in a plastic package and no seepage as a plastic doesn't get uh, you know disturbed with water you can always wipe it off okay we'll replace the cartons you can buy new cartons we'll pay for those cartons now let us say if the the item itself is damaged hmm. okay then we'll have to pay for that entire damaged item 
Okay. So it depends on the merit of the case, whether how, yes. how good your claim is, whether you had the plastics and the material is safe, you are not required. You will only get the repacking. Otherwise, the packing will be required. So Hilji, you don't want to unmute yourself. So I'm not bothering you. I move on to the next question. Interesting one. And this is why interesting because yes, the claims can be denied and anyone can take it. Ruby, you can also take it for long. You have been, and if you have say, seen this, please let us know. If a claim is denied, what is the scope of appealing? Where exactly as a consumer I can go? I think there is merit in the in my case. I have applied to the insurance company. I'm not getting the claim. I'm not satisfied. What is the course it is uh, is available to me? First with the insurance companies, then I will come to Ruby if you have seen anything or heard or anything about it. Yeah, there is one site uh, recently, I think it had come on the in the papers that in case there is any issue or kind of a dispute, uh, then you any consumer, any member uh, can go there and uh, register that. So what I will do, I will send you the details of that and you can circulate to the members. Perfect. So those details will be shared with you. Now it's asking the person, boss, where should I go and complain against you? So such a th where should we go and complain against insurance companies if we are not satisfied with the claim? Okay. Uh, insurance companies are uh, you know, overseen by the CBUA, the central bank. Earlier, it was the insurance authority, which now the insurance authorities' operations have been taken over by the CBUA. So on the CBUA website, there is a portal, there is a page for insurance-related complaints. So out there, any consumer can put across his uh, complaint or his grievances by giving his uh, you know policy number, the name of the insurance company, uh, even the name of the guy who denied the claim. So uh, then the CBUA will send a notice to the insurance company asking them to clarify their stance. Then it takes over from there. Perfect. CBUA is there the authority. Is a, yeah, yeah. There is, a, there is a platform called Sanadak. Yes. S-A-N-A-D-A-K. Okay. It's a financial insurance resolution made simpler and accessible in UAE. Okay. So if any claim is rejected and the insurer feel that his claim is valid, mm. he can lodge with all the documents on this website. Yes. On oh, this platform. That, that is especially for the dispute to resolve the financial and insurance disputes. Okay. On the uh, on the kidding, I'm just kidding, Sajid, but, but did you deliberately did not tell us about this? Uh... <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm always, I, I say go to the central bank. You know, the just, highest authority. <laughs> Padia, you want to add something there? You have something, some other authority where uh, other than this, this is also an alternative? No, that, that's the only one. It is actually recently launched in March. They uh, mm -hmm. This is uh, governed by the central bank. They have done this initiative, sanada.ae, if I'm not wrong. So any sort of um, dispute uh, um, between the consumer and the financial institution, including the insurance companies, uh, they can lodge the complaint. And of course, they will be considered into um, come on, pay up. Okay. Uh, in the interest of that, that is a, yeah, already... there is a short video, short mm -hmm. video for that purpose. And mm -hmm. for the benefit of members, I will request our secretary DC to circulate in all the groups. Okay. Rishi, bhai, please circulate that video on Sanadar. Yeah. What is that? And since we are reaching 555, five, five, uh, I mean, five, uh, we are already five, uh, five minutes over. Last question, that is on chartered accountants because someone talked about chartered accountants and professional indemnity. One question has come from one member which says, what points we should take into consideration? What points we should take into consideration while taking professional indemnity policy for engineering supervision task provided by the client to provided to client worldwide. So he is into engineering supervision. He wants to take a professional indemnity policy as your experience from your experience, what we should take note of or what we should consider before applying for this policy that these should be the inclusions or these should be the ex exclusions. Um, the thing is, I don't have full information about the professional indemnity with regards to certain profession. I'm aware like generally what does it cover, but uh, if you want, of course, we can check with our specialized people who are in-house and we can get back to you with the information. That's not an issue. We can do that. It makes sense. Sajit, you want to say something on that? Yeah. he. Uh, my understanding is it's an architectural and engineering firm and they're looking to purchase a professional indemnity policy. What do they need to consider? The first and foremost, what they need to consider is their clientele. Okay. Now, who are they working for? Who are their clients? Now, are they in, uh, you know, are they in a particular geography? 
now the us is us and the uk is a highly litigious society so anything and everything there could be a case against you anybody it is not so much out here it is maybe somewhere in the middle in the subcontinent so this is the first thing that uh, any company per, you know engaging in any professional task that includes chartered accountants anybody in, engaging in a professional capacity needs to consider who is your client who is your client a should something go wrong what can happen now is it very easy for them to go to court or is it uh, very difficult now uh, people uh, tend to be very uh, litigious in a very litigious society everybody wants to go to court in the us in india you threaten that i'll take you to court but you stop midway you know how a civil case goes the years it takes so all this needs to be considered when you purchase your pi policy professional liability policy the second thing you need to consider is what is your exposure again that is based on your clientele like what kind of ex- indemnities do you think that you will be asked to pay out in case you make a mistake okay now uh, i'll just give you an example professional indemnity uh, for doctors is called medical malpractice it's the same thing but in a, it's called different uh, a simple ent specialist or a general physician his exposure is far less than a cardiothoracic surgeon or a plastic surgeon okay so you understand what is your exposure what kind of work do you do do you design structures or you design furniture a structural design is quite risky now if the structure fails or there are defects on the structure the pillar cracks there is a load displacement and because of which the entire building is at, at risk of collapse and you have to vacate and you cannot do anything on that building that is a huge liability whereas if you are to design some uh, ac systems or venting systems or some furniture or maybe audio visual systems it's 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 easily redoable you can maybe even at your own expense you can break up the entire thing and redo it again so the exposure is based on your job your expertise and the kind of clients that you work on now if i were to give you an example again an example if somebody were working on stick putting stickers on uh, burj khalifa or putting led panels on burj khalifa i'd say the exposure is enormous that is the biggest build, the tallest building in the world if something were to go wrong and you know a, you know a fire to originate and it spreads to the entire building or something like that it's an enormous exposure it is a a couple of billion dollar exposure but the same guy can be doing led panels on one of the rta pillars also the exposure is very less so these are the elements that you need to consider when purchasing a professional liability insurance your expertise the uh, previous cases you know you know where mistakes have been made people have pulled you up and said you have made a mistake there could be a threat of suing all these elements have to be taken into consideration your clientele and of course there is a cost element also there is no need for a uh, for a you know small scale architect and engineer to buy a you know 20 million dollar professional indemnity insurance thank you sir it's for safe that, it's safe but but it's cost look at your contract sir and based on your contract based based on your contract terms decide what is your exposure uh, thank you the pan- thank you to all the panelists before i give it back to rishi bhai uh, ruby your 30 seconds what do you want to say thank you for all your time for your 30 seconds what do you want to say to our members as your closing statement i would really like to thank you each and every one of you for having the patience of listening to me and uh, it's really nice i really feel privileged to be a part of this community today I'm really overwhelmed that I'm here and I'm speaking and talking to each and every one and looking forward to meet all of you soon. That's what I can Thank say. You, Thank Ruby. you Thank once you again. Thank you. Thank you for all my Madhya. Your 30 seconds. You are connecting from two, but you did a good job. Thank you, Madhya. Your 30 seconds to our members. Thank you. Thank you as well, uh, everyone. And hopefully with our session today, uh, you were able to get the answers to your queries. And I hope so in future. uh we'll be able to assist you more thank you we are looking forward to that we are looking forward to that 30 second last suggest from from your side and then we hand over to rishi mm, thank you thank you very much everybody uh, sumani ji jay rishi everybody ruby madhya it was a pleasure meeting you i hope thank i you. have been useful in this in this webinar and uh, looking forward to meeting you all next time thank you where you have been useful rishi bhai back to you 
Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for taking time out at the last minute and taking all the complicated, difficult question. It's not easy. Can I also request, because we have a lot of questions not we cannot cover today. Can I please connect these people with you in case they want to discuss some specific questions with you? So yes, I, I take uh, your sure. noting. Yes, thank you so much for your support as always. And now uh, I'll be like to come to the end of the webinar today. So I want to thank all the members, our past chairman, our chairman, our vice chairman, all the XCOM members for being there for working tirelessly to build, bring this up with us. And we are actually trying to uh, discuss some of the important uh, issues which we are facing from um, you know every day now even the rains projected so at least it will help us to prepare a bit about it so thank you very much so we'll come to the now vote of thanks so i want to request balram to please come forward and do the vote of thanks and we will end up the session there thank you very much and have a very good evening thank you rishi thank you very much uh, good evening dear all and uh, thank you for this opportunity also i pray for the safety of each one of you and uh, your dear and dears in this unprecedented times. I'm sure most of your doubts related to insurance claims and insurance policy must have been already addressed by now. So as we draw the curtains on today's insightful and timely conducted webinar, navigating insurance claim process and insurance policies, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your active participation and engagement. First and foremost, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to the leadership of management committee for unwavering commitment to organize this crucial event in a short notice. The dedication to addressing this pressing concern surrounding the insurance related challenges in the aftermath of recent uh, events in truly commendable, is truly commendable. Our sincere thanks are also due to our esteemed speakers for generously sharing their expertise and insights. Your valuable contributions have undoubt, undoubtedly enriched our understanding of how to navigate through these unprecedented times and effectively manage insurance claims. It would be wrong on our part if I don't uh, extend our gratitude to our attendees. Your presence today endorsed the importance of staying informed and proactive in safeguarding our interests during evolving circumstances. Thank you all for participating in this event or webinar. As we depart from this virtual gathering, let us carry forth the knowledge and insights gained today, empowering ourselves to make informed decisions and navigate through the challenges ahead with confidence. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, I would like forward. I would like to look forward to your con continued participation in our future endeavors. I uh, request each one of you to take care of uh, yourself and your loved ones because we forecast uh, further more rains uh, during the coming days. So uh, thank you all once again and take care. Yeah, over to Rishi, but if you have anything to say. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And I'd, uh, I'd like to also thank our sponsors, our title sponsor, Bricks and Woods Real Estate, our principal sponsor, MBG Tally, AGMC, Lulu, IFCO, Motila, Loswa, Lola, Magri, our platinum sponsors, Nadim and Umandra, Chartered Accountants, UHY James, SBC, HBC, HSBC, ASP Auditing, National Bonds, ECAG Group, HLB Ham. And also like to thank our uh, media partner, Khalish Time, valuation partner, Windmills, institutional partner, Delhi Private School, and banking partner, Bank of Broda. At the end, I would, I, would, I would like to say thank you each one of you for attending the session and have a very good evening. Bye-bye for now.